People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Erythritol, something that's found in fruit, it's also made by the body. But it's used for non-nutritive sweetener purposes, one of those ugly beast chemicals, right? We're publishing this activity or this content right now because one of our subscribers asked us to. His point was, look, there's a big scare going on with erythritol right now. Erythritol is one of the sugar alcohols, if you've heard of those. Maltolol and several others are more well known because they've been a lot cheaper and easier to make. The problem with those is they cause diarrhea and cramps. Erythritol doesn't cause nearly so much of that problem, so it has been less less used because of expenses. They've made a lot of progress over the past few years in making erythritol. So guess what? It's starting to mushroom in terms of importance and prevalence and use in keto type of foods. Now, there was an interesting article just last month in Nature magazine. It was featured on CNN. And basically what it showed is some potential issues in terms of danger with erythritol. It looked like erythritol may actually increase the clot forming mechanisms of the blood, of the platelets themselves. Here's the study. It was a study in Nature magazine. I'll first go to 50,000 feet on my perspective on it. I'll, we'll let uh, Jesus get into some of the details, provide those. From my perspective, what you have is a fishing expedition, meaning you'll often see research groups go, look, go through and look at dozens of items, in this case, chemicals, to see if any of those are causing any risk. When they come up with something, you know, they raise the red flag, that's a what we would call a research signal. And then the question is, okay, Okay, was that just something that happened because of some quirk that we did in the study? Was it probabilities? Is there some real danger? When I say probabilities, you need to know this about studies. The typical thing for a probability for a study is you'll see it. P equals 0.05. Probability of 5%. So what that means is just on a random basis, if you look at 20 different things and all of them are normal, all of them cause no problem, still in that study, one of them is going to very likely to show that it causes a problem. So that's why we use the term research signal. That's exactly what happened with the original screening study on erythritol. There was a research signal. All of us should not react to a research signal. In fact, folks associated with erythritol said, wait a minute, we've looked at erythritol and they have and it appears to be safe. This is premature. Well, there's no group that I know of yet that has said, oh, wait a minute, we need to take erythritol out of the, the food supply. We need to limit it, etc." But the group that did the original research did far better than most groups. Most groups will just do the, the fishing expedition and try to get as much airtime as they can from press. That's not what these guys did. These guys went ahead and did some deeper work. So, Jesus, with that, I'm going to let you talk about the details. Yeah, I, I will mention that the study on the sign and the statistics is a really good study. That's for sure. Nature Medicine is one of the top five journals that you want to take a look at when to medicine is related to. That being said, every study has limitations and the others stated that on this one. When they are describing the findings they made, they are saying, hey, people who are consuming erythritol have two to three times more risk of getting a heart attack or dying of a stroke or something related to cardiovascular disease up to three years. But on the design, they did measure erythritol only once for the start of the test, the survey. So for those three years, they were not monitoring erythritol all levels afterwards. So, and they do declare that on the study and they mentioned that with this type of design, they can only state that it might be some association, not causation. It means erythritol might not be the one to blame because even their population had other risk factors. They were overweight, they had a poorly diet, they were diabetic, other things that might be related to the outcome. However, we mentioned this study was trending and it was even published in a lot of news on CNN included. And you got a lot of traction on the mainstream media. You transform scientific finding into a fact. That's just a really, really big jump to make. Any scientist will let you know that it's difficult to get a 100% evidence on anything. So I will say that it's a good step forward to study the risk of this type of sweetness. 
So Jesus mentioned causation versus association, and that's the essence of the problem with a fishing expedition. With a fishing expedition, you just go in and you look and see what's associated. The typical problem with those is what's called a participation bias. In this world, for this study, what that would look like would be, oh, well, wait a minute, maybe those People that were using erythritol more likely to cardiovascular disease because they were already more obese. Maybe that was the reason why they were using the erythritol in the first place. And it was the obesity causing it rather than the erythritol. Now, that's not likely to be the exact issue with this study based on some other things that we saw in the study design. But that's the typical issue. And you really do have to be careful before you just react to a headline. Now, what's my perspective? Bottom line, you know, none of us like the use of sweeteners, whether you want to call them natural chemical or a bad chemical or whatever. But I think that we ask the wrong question. It's non-nutritive sweeteners are all bad. The question is, are they worse than sugar? Are they worse than the grain products that provide us most of our carbs in our diet? And I do regularly see a lot more people dying from sugar and grain products than I do from non-nutritive sweeteners. That's just a fact. So the reality is we do want to control our diet. Many of us, like myself, I grew up in the deep south, the land of sweet tea and blackberry pie with ice cream on it. So I have my own sweets addictions and I've shared my struggles with those. Bottom line, I've gotten rid of most of them. How do you do that? Continued push continue discipline, go on low-carb diet, stay on a low-carb diet, do that road work.